Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. Today I'm going to show you guys something rather special, something that many of you can look forward to in the future and that is PC VR gaming on your Oculus Quest headset without the need of a gaming PC, which can be used anywhere in the world. And I'll show you how to achieve that as well in this video. So I'm going to tell you about Pluto Sphere, which is how I'm able to achieve this. And then I'll show you it in action with a broadband connection and then a mobile phone connection to allow you to play, as I just said, anywhere in the world. Combining this method with your Oculus Quest and a 5G connection, if you're lucky enough to be in a 5G location, you can have something pretty awesome on your hands. So I think this is enough chinwagging this is a great one. Let's get started. So to give you guys some context, Pluto Sphere is a service that basically gives you a remote high-end PC with an incredible internet connection. They are running these machines on Amazon Web Services, so when you sign up to Pluto Sphere, they will give you a machine at a server location that has the lowest ping. So you can find out the location which has the lowest ping by going to cloud ping.info and not surprisingly my location was London and the ping has changed between 21 to 28 milliseconds since I've been using this service so if you're closer to a server location like if you actually live in London you're going to have a lower ping than I've got because I live you know about 100 miles away okay so that sorted out the remote side of things that sorted out your computer you will then need to sideload an application onto your oculus quest that will allow you to connect to that computer to play VR. So your headset will connect remotely to this PC and this PC will stream virtual reality content to your headset. And you can also use other services so you can connect to this remote PC and play flat screen games as well with a high-end computer, not just virtual reality, so multi-purpose. So the next step in order to play, assuming that you've just done the initial setup, you'll have to go to the Pluto application and start your machine. You can then connect to that computer using desktop vision or any other application that you would like and install games. You'd open up Steam VR and start downloading any of the content that you own or you want to purchase. And what I loved about these machines is that they had seriously good internet connection my download speeds were insane you can see they were averaging around 50 megabytes per second and then it peaked at 150 megabytes that's just insane when i'm only reaching 30 megabits which is about four megabytes at home i was yeah i was really impressed by that half-life alex took like two minutes to install so now we've got the pluto sphere machine set up we've got the oculus quest ready to play vr games and we've got games installed so let's play stuff. I would like to note though, that the current configuration of Pluto Sphere is favoring latency over quality. The recommended minimal internet speeds for this service is 50 megabits per second. And I'm running at about 34 on a good day. So this is going to be a decent test to see how well it actually holds up. So this is me playing on the PC. In my experience playing this, the latency was actually very impressive. I was expecting some serious delay, but it worked really well, showing the benefit of having a vendor with data centers that are all over the world, scattered everywhere. So you're kind of, wherever you are in the world, you're gonna be too far away from one. There is of course still some delay when you're comparing it to a, a wired solution, like a wired PC VR headset to a computer. There is of course some more delay there, but it's definitely playable without any fuss. The quality of the experience did change dramatically Automatically whilst I was playing sometimes it would be really clear and then it was really pixelated and that's what I was talking about earlier that it's favoring latency so it's actually dropping my bit rate so the quality that I see in favor of having good latency which I think is a good decision they just haven't implemented the feature yet where I as a customer will have the granular control about what I want to choose latency or bitrate but overall as I said I'm very very impressed and would be extremely excited about the service if I didn't have a gaming PC especially with the current shortage of GPUs expected to go on for a while if you've got a good internet connection but you don't have a gaming PC then I would seriously seriously think about trying this service at least just try it for one month if you want and then you know if you don't like it or it doesn't work out you can just scrap it and you've only spent around 10 bucks then but then I tried something else and the service just shone. It was brilliant. There was something special about this. So you can install Virtual Desktop Streamer on the remote PC. You can then type in your username. For me, it was Steve Knows. And you can use Virtual Desktop on your Oculus Quest to play SteamVR on that service that's out there on the cloud. 
And because of this, you get access to the configuration options. You can slow down the frame rate if you so wish, which will help with delay. You can also increase the bit rate if you want better quality. You had that granular control and it allowed me to have a much more beautiful VR experience. And I think Guy Godin just absolutely nailed the service because the latency, you can see the stats on the screen, the latency was phenomenal when playing this. It was really, really good. So not only did I have good quality, I had playable latency as well. There is of course still latency. It's not comparable to a wired solution, but the fact that this was playing on a computer that was, you know, it was in London, a hundred miles away. And now for the part that gets me excited about owning this service, being able to play PC VR anywhere in the world with an internet connection. So I connected my Oculus Quest to my mobile phone so I could play on this Bluetooth Sphere service, which is a technique that you can do, as I just said, anywhere in the world. If you go camping, you can do this. If you wanna play VR in a hotel, you can do this, even though their internet isn't great. So connecting your phone, might be a better option. It can't just be me who wants virtual reality accessible at any point, at any time, anywhere in the world. So connecting to this service via my mobile phone, again, was incredibly impressive. I was using a 4G connection. I don't live in a 5G area. So if you do live in a 5G area, you can expect better results. It was of course, again, there was delay. I don't expect myself to be playing, you know, Beat Saber Expert Plus. With this on, I've got Beat Saber on my Oculus Quest already, so why would I need to play it in the cloud? Unless I'm into some crazy modding, of course. But the latency was decent, the quality suffered, of course, but it was playable. If you just want PC VR, not only to have decent graphics, but just have access to be able to play some incredible titles that the Quest can't provide, like these full campaign length, incredible games, Half-Life Alex, Asgard's Wrath, then this could suit your needs. I definitely look forward to trying it with 5G as well, but the capabilities just really excite me that you have this wireless solution that you can play virtual reality anywhere in the world at any point in time, given that you've got a decent internet connection. Because I love to take my Oculus Quest, my Nintendo Switch, wherever I go traveling. So I'm really happy to have this. So final thoughts, overall Pluto Sphere, seriously impressed. Even with a terrible, terrible internet connection that I have, it was actually still playable. So if you have a Wi-Fi 6 router and meet the minimum requirements, because I was cheekily using a Wi-Fi 5 router and 34 megabits, not 50 megabits router, and it was still playable, then I think you're gonna have a quite a good time with this. I know other YouTubers who have good internet connections and were closer to one of the server locations just had such a great time with this service and was even able to play Beat Saber, no problem, even with the tiny bit of delay. But if you're looking into this at the moment, as it stands, I recommend using the virtual desktop application. The Pluto Sphere application just wasn't as good yet, but it's not released yet. So I, I kind of feel harsh judging it like that. You know, virtual desktop has been out a while and <laughs> these Guy Godin's ironed out a lot of the kinks in it. So hopefully we'll see some options to configure the connection in Pluto Sphere and that might make all of the difference. So that's it from me today, guys. Thanks for coming to check out how to play high-end PC VR gaming on your Oculus Quest anywhere in the world with an internet connection without the need of a high-end gaming PC sat at your desk. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you've been here before, I've been getting comments about YouTube unsubscribing you. So please, I would appreciate if you just check if it has unsubscribed you, give it a click and maybe a thumbs up whilst you're down there. I would really appreciate it. So happy gaming, guys. Good day.